Today's boiler is a Raveny Silver Star 100T. Now this particular boiler comes in two shapes. There's a 100, as I just said, and an 80. We're going to go through the functionality of this boiler in heating and hot water. We're going to take the case off and have a look inside. Before we do, I'll just go over removing this case. At the moment the bottom panel is already removed. Normally we'd have four screws on the underside, two on this side and two on the other side and then that bottom panel will come off. Then you've got screws at the back, at the top here and there and then the whole thing then just lifts off. We're now going to remove the combustion cover. You can see the screws there and there to remove them and then it'll just simply slide off through them grooves there. Now on this particular boiler there's um, two forms of it, I said that earlier, but there's also two versions as well, there's a Mark 1 and a Mark 2. This is a Mark 2 version you can tell in two ways, you can tell by these LED lights here and you can also tell by, if I just lower that down it's not in the best condition this, you can tell by the gas valve as well because this is the Mark II as I said and it's because there's no ignition control box there's normally an ignition control box on the side of the gas valve also the gas valve type is different as well. On the Mark 1 version it's got a Honeywell gas valve and this has got a Dung's gas valve and you can tell by the design and shape but the main thing is there's no ignition control box added to the gas valve. Also inside here is a PCB and because it's a Mark 2 there's only one PCB as I said earlier, on the version 1, you'd have a PCB on the gas valve and a PCB in here, but everything's in here, so that does the spark, fan, ignition, and also it does the main driver board, so it's all in one in this particular boiler. I've got Pete with me today, um, he wants to ask a question, so go on Pete, what did yeah. you say then? So in the air. Uh the Mark 1 version, he said it has a control box and he just mentioned that it has a second PCB. Uh, is the second PCB the control box? Is that what you actually mean? Well, yeah, you got two, as I said, you got two PCBs. The control box on the ver version 1 would be on the side of the gas valve, so that would deal with the ignition, the spark gas valve fan, and the driver board, which is located in here. So there's your two PCBs on the version 1. On this Mark 2, you've just got one board which is inside here that does everything. Good. Is that okay? That's fine. So we're now going to look at the, um, the operation on heating and hot water mode. So I'll start with the heating first. So that's your timer. This button is your like summer winter button. Yeah, you can lift it up. We can see a bit better. Yeah, so this button here is your summer and winter. So that's got to be in for the heating. You can have your room thermostat if fitted. So once they're calling for heat and your thermostat up here is turned up, then the fan and a pump will start running. So this is your pump as I said. You've also got, this is your, your central heating thermistor, your overheat thermostat. So the flow of the heat from the main heat exchanger. So that's the main heat exchanger. So it's going to come down there, pass through these two controls, into the diverter valve here. So that's the flow pipe going into the diverter. 
it will go and carry on down and out to the radiators. So that's a passage of the heating circuit, then it will return back. We'll look at the pump here. So it's coming back through the pump and then up into the return pipe and back into the main heat exchanger to be heated. At the same time, your fan's running, makes the air pressure switch, sends a signal down to the ignition box, our control box which is in here, sends a spark, there's your spark electrode and the flame extension electrode, the gas valve opens at the same time, lets the gas out through this gas pipe into the jets and then it's ignited by the spark electrode. The flame sensing electrode detects the flame, keeps the process going and then that's your boiler up and running. This part of the gas valve is the modulating coil. This is low voltage. That modulates the um, burner pressure up and down depending on what the primary sensor here what that's saying and also what it's set on the front of the boiler so that will change the voltage to make the burner pressure go up and down so on the hot water side what we've got the flow pipe again coming down to the diverter valve but this time, the diverter valve will move through the hot water, cold water going into the water section, sorry, making the diverter valve move. And you can see that switch on the top of the diverter. That then pushed up, makes the switch. That then starts the sequence, starts the pump and ignition sequence to work, just like I said before. Now, the diverter valve is connected to the plate heat exchanger, so that primary flow goes through the diverter valve and into the plate. That's the flow, heats that up, and then returns back. It's difficult to see, you can just see the pipe there, where that black pressure switch is. It goes into that manifold, and then into the pump and then back up the return and then just do that circuit throughout the boiler and then at the same time the cold water goes into the plate gets hot there's the hot water for mister pipe here goes out to the tap so that's the flow for the hot water have you got a question, Pete? You want to ask about the diverter valve? Yeah, I was just on a job the other week where they were getting intermittent hot water, Tony. Sometimes it was coming on and coming off. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And uh, I was just wondering what way you'd be looking for the problem. Uh, I would, was thinking about looking at the micro switch here. Yeah. Uh, would I be looking in the right area if I was doing that or that's yeah. the problem? Yeah, there's that possibility. That could be it. Usually on these, um, I'd first look at the primary sensor. Yeah. That's usually the cold prep. Yeah. Yeah. Or you might have a problem with a hot water sensor. Right. As okay. well. So you could ideally change both of them. Yeah. And that should eliminate your problem. Fairly. Failing that, you could have a problem with the micro switch itself. Yeah. Or the diverter valve, depending on the flow rate going through the boiler. Yeah. Because if you're running too slow and the di diaphragm's wearing, yeah. then it can't cope with a slow flow rate and then that can drop out and go off. Okay. So they're the areas you need to be looking at. Cheers, mate. The other controls on this boiler, um, you got your water pressure switch. So if the pressure's too low, then that'll kill the boiler got your PRV there as well. 
Oh, that's Master Care Vent. And uh, I think that's mainly what we've covered on this boiler. It's not particularly in the best condition, this one. It's knocking on a bit now. But it's a standard efficiency boiler. So for um, gas portfolio people who are just like doing their training, to do your working pressure and your burner pressure, so on your gas valve, that's your uh, inlet on the bottom and your burner pressure is at the top so that's for you guys all right pete you got another question yeah so just in regards to this pressure switch here if you yeah. were if you were testing it mm. uh, how would you go about that like you know to make sure that's working okay yeah. well you could link it out you can see the connections there so you can pull it off and then link that together and that would then eliminate that yeah or show that that's a problem yeah good, good. so that's it on the functionality of this boiler so we'll see you on the next video and thank you for watching